Okay, it's time for some sweets. Uh, I'll let you know right right now you're not going to see with these recipes I'm doing, you're not going to see a lot of sweets. I don't eat a lot of sweets. Um, simply because, you know, I can appreciate the flavor of sweets uh, like anybody else. And it's not health uh, reasons. Um, Although too much sweets obviously is not healthy for you and it's not good for your teeth. Um, the reason I haven't eaten a lot of sweets in my life is just because I have very sensitive taste buds so I find sugar very overwhelming. So I probably have a couple desserts a year tops. But I do have them once in a while. I usually have to cut down the sugar, uh, you know, at least by half what everybody else would put in. <laughs> but anyways, uh, so... I had some bananas I needed to get rid of, and um, and I find bananas, I should add just to show you, I find bananas actually very sweet. Uh, fruit in general very sweet. And our man-made sweets, wow. So anyways, I had bananas, so I wanted to, uh, they were starting to, they hadn't rotted yet, but they were getting softer, getting to that uh, middle point. So I wanted to use them up, and so I thought, might as well uh, do something sweet and uh, give you guys something sweet to cook. That's uh, the method of half raw, half cooking. So, I'm actually making this up. I've made, again, I never make the same thing twice. So, I'm kind of, I've made makeshift bread puddings before. But again, I just make it up. So this one's gonna be half cooked, half raw. So what I've got here, is bread, use any kind of bread you want. Uh, this is organic bread with flax seeds, that should be yummy. It's a sourdough organic bread. <clears throat> just cut it into chunks, and I put in some ground almonds, just because I had them, and I put in some raisins, just because I had them. And then I had a teeny bit of a mix of, I'm not even sure everything's in here, I know there's dried cherries, I'm not sure what these white things are. I think they're custard things. And this is a cinnamon chunk. So if you have any, like, you know, uh, sweet mixes or, or you know, for, like you would take on camping or granola mixes, if you have any of that lying around, you can throw a little of that in there. Whatever you want. Just try not to overdo it. You still want the bread to be the main, you know, you want to be the, the bread to be the star of the show. And the custard, for lack of a better word, that we're going to put on top, the cream. So there you go. So now I'm going to take this and I'm going to put in, so I, I'm unscrewing a cap with one hand. <laughs> there we go. Rum. I had a little bit of rum. If I had more, I'd put more in it. So I'm going to put rum and because I've got a lot of sweet things for me anyways in there I'm just gonna put a little bit of maple syrup just for flavor <coughs> not too much and I'm gonna put in some sunflower oil and there goes the sunflower oil and there goes the uh, rum container. And because I had it lying around, I'll put a little bit of lemon. You could put orange juice, if you have an orange, whatever. I just basically want to get a little bit, not too much liquid, but a little bit of liquid in there. Because the if it's just booze, it'll, it'll evaporate pretty quick. So we want some moisture in this when we bake it. So... You know, get some moisture in there, not too much, you don't want it floating, but enough that it's, it won't completely dry out. There'll still be some moisture by the time it's baked and finished. And so you've got the oil in there, the booze, a little bit of natural juices, some goodies floating around. And you just mix it up. In this case, it looks, still looks a little dry to me, so I think I'm going to put a little bit of water. So I'm just going to put the camera down for a sec. Alright, and 
did put a lot, just a little bit, just because they're such, this is a very dry bread to begin with. You can use any bread you want. If it's a normal bread, a softer bread, you definitely won't need as much liquid because it'll dissolve quickly. This is very dry, tough bread, so I put a little water in just to help it along. And that looks good to me. Alright. And then any kind of little baking dishes you got, you put it in there. tell this might be a little too sweet for me but we'll see. I'm definitely not adding any sugar because between the maple sugar and that mix that I put in it's already very sweet and raisins and natural sugars that are in the bananas it'll be plenty sweet for me but again you judge it. Alright, so now what we're going to do is I've preheated the oven and we're going to go pop it in the oven. Alright, so I popped them in the oven. I put it at a roughly about 4, 450. And so normally with a bread pudding, you, you, whatever custardy cream sauce, you pour that over top and then you bake it. In this case, we're because we're doing half raw and half cooked, we're not doing that. So we're just going to cook it as is as it is. Thus I, I try to get a little extra moisture in there. But we don't really, I mean we're not, it's not even that you're cooking it because everything in there doesn't need to be cooked. So it's really just getting those flavors to start bubbling and mixing and you know that's pretty much it. Maybe get a little toasty going on the top. We might crank up the top burner at the very end. I think I will and just toast the top. So really just eye it. I don't know how long, probably just a few minutes, because again, we're not really cooking it, we're just heating it up, blending the flavors, toasting the top. Now while we're doing that, the quote-unquote custard. There's no custard in here. If you want to add a little custard in yours, by all means, it might help the color of the bananas. If you have some yellow food coloring, if, if you're making this for guests and you want presentation, you could add a little yellow food coloring because it's going to be pretty pale by the time it's done normally. For me, you know, this is just for me, so I'm going to leave it as is, but you could put a little bit of custard or you could put a little bit of food, yellow food coloring. Either way, what I did here was put organic bananas in the blender, and I put just a teeny bit of water, and I squeezed a little bit of that lemon juice in there, and no sugar. I don't, I don't need any sugar for this. There's enough sugar for me running through this whole thing. Right It doesn't really need any more sugar for me, but just because I put a little bit in the bake, just to kind of tie them in, I'm putting just a little bit of maple syrup, just a tiny bit, just to put a little subtle flavoring in there, just very, very subtle, just so it ties them in. Often when I, you start to see as I do things, if, if, I, if I'm doing a dish where it's hot and cold or it's two or three components that are completely different kind of being thrown together at, you know placed together at the last minute and are, are separate I often will take one or two ingredients 
and trace it through just so that they they kind of marry a bit marry with each other so anyways I just put a teeny bit in there just cuz That's perfect. All right, and I like the consistency, so that's it. That is done. Now we just gotta wait for the uh, for this to cook. So I'm just gonna again play it by ear, just a few minutes. I'm probably gonna more play it by. Actually, I wonder whether if that's where it comes because I just said I'm gonna play it by ear, but I was actually literally thinking that's how I'm actually going to do it. I'm gonna wait until I hear it. Sometimes I do that with cooking. I'll know by the sound, you know, if things are gelling and bubbling. Isn't that funny? Makes you wonder if that's where that saying came from or some similar situation. Play it by ear. But yeah, literally going to play it by ear and then toast the top. Turn the top burner on. Just to get the, maybe even just tiny, burn the corners a bit, whatever. And then we'll go to the next step. All right, I took them out of the oven, and as you can see, they're nice and toasted. You can hear it probably. You can hear the juices and the things bubbling in there. So don't worry if it's too dry. We don't want it bone dry, but don't don't worry. It was just to keep it from completely turning into hard croutons. Really, these the stuff we put in there and for flavor. And of course we wanted the rum to cook off, that's the other purpose of cooking it. To blend the flavors, to cook off the alcohol, to keep the flavors, keep a little bit of moisture in there, while also to toasting it a bit. So there you go. And now what I did was I put the banana sauce, or custard, in the fridge. It doesn't need to be, but I did it because uh, a lot of times with certain uh, decadent kind of desserts, it's nice to have hot against cold, and we see this when, you know, you go to a, a restaurant and drizzle a hot fruit sauce over like cheesecake or something, etc., etc. So it was really just for, for the experience. I wanted it to uh, be really cold. And now as you can see, I'm just pouring it over top. Again, if this is for guests and you want a little more presentation, then what you could do is put some either real custard or, or better yet, just some yellow food coloring. If you want it to be really yellow, to sell the banana. And how much you decide. How much you're going to put in of the sauce. And there you go. I have some uh, ground cloves. I'm going to put just a little bit of sprinkle a little bit of ground cloves on top. And if I had a fresh mint, I'd put a little sprig of mint in the top if I was serving it to guests and had mint. But I have no guests and I have no mint. So I'm just going to have it as is. I'm just going to let it sit for just a second. And then I'm going to try to eat it. Alright. Let's try this out. Yeah, too sweet for me, but that's always a battle that I have. I probably could have pulled back a little bit more. I think anybody else 
and find it just perfect. Mm, you can really taste the banana. You can really taste the toastiness of the, and the combined flavors of the pudding. So, again, half raw, half cooked. So, <clears throat> you're getting all the pleasures of cooking. I wouldn't say benefits, I'm not sure how many nutritional benefits is in the cooked portion of this, but you're getting the pleasurable benefits. And then you're getting, definitely getting the uh, benefits of the raw banana on top. Mm. Not too shabby for something I just made up. As I said, I never make the same recipe twice, so I've played around with these kind of puddings, but I've never made one where I made a banana sauce like that, poured it over. I have to say, I'm sold. So play around. You know, it doesn't matter what's really in it. Play around with making, and again, this is, I would recommend this is an everyday thing. This is, uh, at least not for me, this is a treat. So again, if you're totally raw, you won't go near this. But if you're somewhere who, someone who is on their way to raw, transitioning, this is perfect for you. Or if you ha have no intention of ever going completely raw, but you want some of the benefits of eating, you don't want to cook everything, you want some raw nutrients in all of your foods, then uh, here's a way you can get the raw benefits of banana while having a hot, yummy little, decadent little dessert. With a minimal of sugar, I mean, yes, there's there's oils, and, you know, and but it's a healthy oil. It's sunflower, and yes, there's sugars, but they're mostly natural sugars. Um, well, I'd say they're all natural sugars. So you know, it's a healthy, decadent treat, and you get the best of both worlds. Go to it. We'll make a sweet. <laughs>